In this video, I will explain to you what Fly's Kappa is, how it is calculated, and how you can interpret the results. So let's start with the first question. What do we need Fly's Kappa for? We use Fly's Kappa when we want to assess the agreement between more than two raters. Now, of course, the question is what the raters are measuring. They could measure a nominal variable, such as whether a person has a depression, yes or no, an ordinal variable, or a metric variable, such as patient's blood pressure. Fly's kappa is used in case of a nominal variable. So use Fly's kappa when you want to measure agreement between raters evaluating a nominal variable. But what exactly is agreement and what is the difference to association? Agreement means raters give the same ratings for the same items. Association means two variables move together. When one goes up or down, the other tends to as well. And we can have poor agreement but strong association. But how is it possible? Let's say we have method A and method B. Now method A always is two times method B. So the Pearson correlation is one because when method A is up, also method B is up. However, the agreement is poor because the values differ significantly. Although they move in the same direction, the ratings are always different. So method A and method B disagree and therefore the agreement is low. Okay, but let's just look at an example. Suppose you've developed a measurement tool, such as a questionnaire, that doctors can use to assess whether a person is depressed or not. Now you give the measuring instrument to three doctors and let them evaluate 50 people. The big question now is, how well do the doctor's measurements agree? If the assessments of the doctors agree very well, one speaks of a high inter-rater reliability. And it is precisely this inter-rater reliability that Fly's Kappa measures. Fly's Kappa is therefore a measure of how reliably more than two raters measure the same. But note, Fly's Kappa can also be applied when the same rater evaluates the same items at more than two time points. In that case, Fly's Kappa indicates how well the measurements of the same person agree. In our example, the variable has two categories, depressive and non-depressive, but it could also have more than two. So Fly's Kappa measures inter-rater agreement for nominal ratings when more than two raters evaluate the same items. One important thing to note, let's say here we have the rating of the three raters and there we have the true value, so if a person is really depressed or not. With Fly's Kappa, you can only make a statement about how reliably the raters measure the same, but it does not tell you whether what they are measuring is correct. If raters almost always give the same classification, Fly's kappa will be very high. However, it does not tell you whether those classifications are correct or reflect reality. In the first case, one speaks of reliability and in the second case, one speaks of validity. Okay, but how do we calculate Fly's kappa? Let's say this is our small example dataset. First, we calculate Fly's kappa with Numico and then we will calculate it by hand and hopefully we'll get the same results. If you like, you can load this dataset with the link in the video description or you can copy your own data into this table. Now click on the tab Reliability. Under Reliability, you can calculate different reliability statistics. Depending on how many variables you click and which level of measurement they have, you will get a suitable suggestion. If you click on Rater 1 and Rater 2, Cohen's Kappa will be calculated. If you further click on Rater 3, Fly's Kappa will be calculated. 
Flyscapper is calculated for nominal variables. If your data was detected as metric, please change the scale level here. And there you can see the calculated flies kappa. If you don't know how to interpret the result, just click on Summary in Words or Interpretation. The value of 0 0.19 suggests a slight level of agreement according to commonly accepted benchmarks. So our kappa is 0 0.19. Let's try to get the same by hand. We can calculate flies kappa with this formula. For that we need PO, the rate's observed agreement, and PE, the expected agreement by chance. For example, if rate is judged completely at random, like flipping a coin for each patient to decide depressed or not depressed. So how do we get PO and PE? Let's start with PE. Let's say we have seven patients and three raters. Each patient was rated by each rater. In the first step, we simply count how many times a patient was rated as depressed and how many times as not depressed. For the first patient, zero raters said that this person is not depressed and three raters said that person is depressed. For the second person, one rater said that the person is not depressed and two said that the person is depressed. Now we do that for all the other patients and we can calculate the sum in each case. In total we have 8 ratings with not depressed and 13 ratings with depressed. So altogether we have 21 ratings. This allows us to calculate how likely it is that a person will be rated as not depressed or as depressed. For this we divide the number of ratings of depressive and not depressive by the total number of 21. So once 8 divided by 21 and thus we get that 38% of the patients are rated as not depressed by the raters and then another 13 divided by 21 and therefore we get that 62% of the patients were rated as depressed. To calculate PE, we now square both values and sum them up. So 0 0.38 squared plus 0 0.62 squared, which is 0 0.53. So we now have PE and we can calculate PO. In order to calculate PO, we can use this formula don't worry, it looks more complicated than it is. Let's start with the first part. Capital N is the number of patients, so 7, and small n is the number of raters, so 3. This gives us 0 0.024 for the first part. In the second part of the formula, we simply square each value in this table and sum that up. So 0 squared plus 3 squared to finally 1 squared plus 2 squared. That gives 47. And the third part comes out to 7 times 3, which equals 21. If we substitute everything, we get 0 0.024 times 47 minus 21, which is equal to 0 0.624. We now have PO and PE. When we insert them into the formula for kappa, we obtain a kappa of 0 0.19. With this we get just a slight agreement. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you next time.